you sell your business, get out of cleaning. Now you have direction. I want to go into this um, blogger space. It's really just starting to heat up. At the time, are there any other African-American blogs that were really taking off? There were a couple. Uh, none of them had really, really popped, but there were a couple. Um, but one of the things that was different about certainly the early blogosphere is that the people that were doing it were doing it as a business, but it was mostly about fun. So they weren't really taking it like a real, they weren't really treating it like a real business. They were taking it, they were getting some money out of it, but they weren't doing it. Maybe they were doing it because they wanted to get closer to celebrities. Maybe they were doing it because um, they like showing pictures of themselves. Maybe they were doing it, you know, for the fame, maybe, they but they weren't, most of the people at the time that were doing it were not doing it as an actual business. Mm -hmm. Let me give you an example of that. When we started, one of the things that all blogs did, and this isn't just the African-American blogs, but all blogs, what they would do is, they would post on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And then because they wanted to have their weekend to go party or go hang out with their friends, they would actually not post any stories on Saturday or Sunday. And then they would go back and post on Monday, right? And this is the way that every blog worked. This is just the status quo. If you started a blog, that was kind of the culture of what you did. So one of the things that I did when I came in there is I was like, well, this is, that's crazy. Why would you do that, right? Like they're Clearly people want it are on the internet on Saturdays and Sundays. Clearly people want stories on Saturdays and Sundays. So the, one of the first things that I instituted is I was like, well, we are going to publish on Saturdays and Sundays. Not only are we going to publish on Saturdays and Sundays, we're going to pu publish double the content that we normally publish on Saturdays and Sundays. Because when we get those people that are coming from these other blogs because they can't go to their favorite blog, they go to us instead because we're the only ones with fresh content. We want them to have the best possible experience and possibly convert them into media takeout readers. So, like I said, there were just, it was, this is, these are things I think that are, that seem fairly obvious right now to a lot of people, but at the time it certainly wasn't obvious. And people were kind of like, why are you doing this? What, what are you doing? And I was just like, well, this is a real business. The customer, the people that you're talking to, they want the content and they don't just want the content on Monday to Friday. They have an insatiable appetite for celebrity content and we're gonna provide it for them. We're gonna be the place that's known for providing you as much celebrity content as you can handle. Okay, I wanna take a, back, a step back for one second because there's a lot of entrepreneurs who are going to either listen to this on podcasts or watch it on YouTube. How long did it take you to get this business off the ground? Because number one, the, 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 the space in terms of the platform I don't know if WordPress existed back then, and if it did, it was in its infancy, or if it was in an earlier um, uh, iteration of what it has now become. So I'd like to know how long did it take you to get it off the ground? And number two, where'd you get the startup money from? Did it come from the selling of the business? Um, well, so with media takeout, it really didn't take that long because there really isn't, from a technical standpoint, there really isn't a ton of programming behind it, then or now, right? Like now it's a little bit more with WordPress and all that. But back then before, if you were just programming it from scratch, which is what we did initially, there really wasn't a lot to do. So to, and, and they were, you know, while there wasn't WordPress, there was something similar, it was called Joomla at the time and you could use it. So there were ways that you could pretty inexpensively create a website even then. So at the time, maybe it cost a couple of thousand dollars to build the website. And then you had to buy like the domain name and whatever else. So all in, I was in under $3,000. So where did I get the money from it? It was, uh, maybe it was from the, wherever it was, $3,000. I had that money at the time. Mm -hmm. So wow. yeah, that, that, yeah, that, but, but that's, that's media, right? Like that's an internet business um, where, where the focus is on content, not on, um, not on uh, technology. So I happened to luck into a business that really didn't cost that much to, to start. With the laundry business, it actually did cost a lot of money, right? Like we had to hire um, a whole bunch of um, experts to come in and explain to us what we did, put together a business plan, put together projections and a whole bunch of other stuff. We had to uh, get a warehouse space. There's a ton of equipment that we had to get. So that cost hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars to put together. So depending on the kind of business that you're in, 
that's you know it, it, it can go from you know from three thousand dollars of community takeout which i'm happy and lucky to have you know been uh, able to be a part of and then the laundry service which I, I don't even remember what it costs but it costs many many hundreds of thousands of dollars to send it off i'm so surprised to hear that because i i remember those early day in i'm not a tech guy i'm not in a space like that uh, i just remember building a website it felt like it cost so much it was like my I, I, listen I, I gotta tell you i would talk to people that were like that were other entrepreneurs that started other companies and i remember there was someone else and i don't want to say the name of the company but I was talking to him and he was like, yeah, you know, we just got built a new website and, you know, we spent a hundred thousand dollars. I was like a hundred thousand exactly. dollars. Yes. <laughs> I could, I was like, I don't, I don't even know how I spent $2,000 and I got like the extras. I got like rims on my website <laughs> with $2,000. Right. So I don't know where this money goes. There are plenty of people out there that would sell you stuff that you didn't need. I was just focused on getting only the things that I needed. And that's part of the thing that I learned from my, from the first business, right? When you, when you're, you start a business, and it's incredibly capital intensive. You spending hundreds of thousands of dollars just to run it for a month is costing you tens of thousands of dollars. So, you know, you are counting every single penny and that's what we were doing in the laundry service. And so that's the way that I had learned. That's the way I kind of was introduced to entrepreneurship. So when I then went to the second business, I wasn't there, I wasn't down to spend a penny that I didn't have to spend. And so, you know, I took kind of the skills that I got in the first business, transferred them into the second one. And that's kind of how I looked at it. And maybe some of the people that I went into just this might have been their first business. And so, you know, they're learning that lesson that I learned uh, from the laundry service. Yeah, you're giving so much wisdom because as a fellow entrepreneur, that is one of the things that you learn really quickly is you have to count every penny. You do not want to spend an extra dime that you don't necessarily have to because you don't know what's around the corner. So it's very, very important to keep your costs down, profits high, keep your staff down. And speaking of that, you're running a blog, right? How big was your staff initially? Because you have to put out content seven days a week. Well, initially it was just me, right? And then but after you're a while- You're writing stories? Well, initially, right? This is 15 years ago. And we didn't, while well, we were putting out content daily, we, it was, it's a little bit different and it, it looked a lot different than, than it is today. So the majority of the content that we were putting out was actually link, external links to other sites. So maybe it was just, it was mostly just headlines and links. And then maybe there was like uh, an original content story, like one a week or so in the beginning. So it really wasn't an overwhelming amount of work, but it was a lot of work, right? Like you had to constantly know what's out there. You had to be able to write the headlines, you had to put it in there and, you know, get get through the system. Um, so, but but it, it wasn't like today where we're producing, you know, whatever, 30, 30 stories a day. So it, was, it looked nothing like that. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.